Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sarah Gottfried. I'm the board certified obstetrician gynecologist who practices personalized and precision medicine for women. And I wanted to talk to you today about polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's something that I, I talked about in a previous video. I recorded a video on cardiovascular disease in women and some of the pregnancy induced changes that are associated with a greater risk in women. And I mentioned that I could record a future video about polycystic ovarian syndrome and cardiovascular risk, and many of you were interested in this. So I wanna to start to get into the details. And what I realize is that this is probably gonna be a three-part series or a five-part series. So I wanna make sure that you ask your questions below. If you have any questions about some of the things I talk about today or in that other video that I recorded, I wanna hear them. So um, I read every single question. I'll make sure that we address them. So I wanna start first by saying, when I went through my medical training, which was a long time ago, I went to Harvard Medical School in 1989. So that was 30 plus years ago. And I had a real interest at that time, of course, in women's health and also in cardiovascular disease. In fact, I did the four years of medical school, I did an extra year of fellowship with the American Heart Association and did some uh, research. And then I, I went to the University of California, San Francisco, San Francisco for residency. So I've been interested in polycystic ovarian syndrome, seeing it in my practice for, uh, well, I started seeing patients in my second year of medical school, so that's 30 years. So I've seen a lot, and I, I have to tell you, when I first went through that training, I was taught two things about PCOS. First, you ask a woman, do you wanna get pregnant or not? If they wanna get pregnant, you give them metformin. Metformin is an insulin sensitizer, maybe you've heard of it. It's given to people who have insulin resistance. It's given in women with PCOS because it's been shown to help them with ovulation and uh, to improve their insulin and glucose uh, homeostasis. Now, it turns out there's other things that help with that that are just as proven, such as berberine. On the other hand, if they don't wanna get pregnant, then I was taught to give them the birth control pill. And I've just recorded a whole bunch of videos talking about why I'm not a fan of the birth control pill unless it's helping you avoid surgery. So that's in patients, for instance, with endometriosis or with really heavy menstrual bleeding, they're anemic and they need that, you know, sort of stronger hormonal control. So short of that, I think we have to apply a systems-based, a systems biology approach to the diagnosis, management, and treatment of polycystic ovarian syndrome. And that's what I wanna share with you over this video series. So I'll give you a quick example. You know, one of the factors when it comes to the greater risk of cardiovascular disease in women who have polycystic ovarian syndrome is that they have high androgen levels. So I'm gonna get into the details of this because I think a lot of people don't understand this. Maybe what they notice is that they have chin hairs, or they have hairs around their breasts, or they have hairs in places that they're not excited about. And so that's called hirsutism. That's present in like 50 to 80% of women who have polycystic ovarian syndrome, so it's not diagnostic. But one of the diagnostic features is that women with PCOS have other signs of hyperandrogenism. And often that's high testosterone, but it can be other things as well. So we'll, we'll talk about the androgen family and we'll talk about this particular biomarker and how hyperandrogenism leads to a greater risk of cardiovascular disease. So that's what I'm gonna share with you in the next video. And I wanna make sure that you get your questions asked so that I can address those. And I just wanted to record this video to let you know, I'm thinking about this. I'm kind of scripting out what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about insulin and glucose. You know, with insulin, it's the thing that changes first before your glucose. It's the thing that changes and then sometimes makes it very hard in women with PCOS to lose weight. So I like to see a fasting insulin between three and seven. And that is not what my insulin was when I first checked it in my 30s. So I'll, I'll get into the details of that. I just wanted to get those questions flowing. So let me know below what questions you have. Please like this and share it. Share it with anyone that you think may struggle with polycystic ovarian syndrome or with other women's health issues. Thanks and I'll see you next time.